Uh, for the record, my name is Jonathan Newsma, council member from the 4th Ward of Evanston, and uh, a quorum of the redistricting committee being present. I call the meeting to order at uh, 7.37 p.m. on Tuesday, May 10th. Uh, this is a once every decade or two committee, so uh, I have done my best to uh, go back and look at what the process was. 10 years ago, actually 20 years ago, and um, what I'll present tonight is the first uh, conversation in uh, what will be uh, an ongoing process, which I hope we can wrap up in about a year. Uh, we have plenty of time to get this done. Um, and so let's, uh, I also want to acknowledge that since this is a once every decade or two committee, uh, we are still uh, getting set up with Zoom access for future meetings, and uh, uh, Council Cummings uh, has indicated that for future meetings, uh, we will have Zoom access available with the regular public comment forum uh, uh, format. So uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. I have received only one uh, comment from a community member Jeff Smith, uh, I'll forward this to the committee members so you guys have it. Um, I don't need to read it, it's several paragraphs long right here. Uh, so I'll forward that uh, so everyone has it. And uh, if there is nobody else desiring to speak uh, at public comment, I will move forward uh, with a presentation that I have put together, uh, having done some research in the, in the, uh, the city archives and drawing on some material that uh, Council Cummings has put together. So, can I, can I just sure. suggest can we talk about briefly before to, to, to can we do housekeeping a little bit now in terms of what, what do you want to do? Like what kind of meeting? housekeeping? Uh, are we meeting the two, first, second Tuesday of the month? That was going to be oh, uh, okay, on the agenda for later, yeah, in, the later in the discussion. Okay, yeah, fine. unless you want to knock it out. Okay. All right, help me out here, Nick. Or should be the mouse or the arrows. Uh, there we go. So, a uh, quick look back at uh, historical census data here in the city of Abbotston. Uh, Devon, we're on page two. Um, just to give us some context for where we are here uh, in 2022, we're looking at the results of the 2020 census. Uh, our population is up almost 5% since the 2010 census. Uh, 10 years ago, we were fairly static. Uh, the increase was only 0.3%. And for context, I, I, I went back to 1970, which is um, longer than, uh, which is twice as long as the uh, longest serving member of health. <laughs> So uh, that should be sufficient background information. So Devon, moving on to the next slide here. Um, are we required to redistrict? And according to state law, the answer is no. Uh, we're not required to redistrict unless our population goes below 70,000 or above 90,000 people. And as you saw in the previous slide, you know, we're fairly consistently within that range over the last 50 years. Um, so state law does not require that we have to redistrict. However, state law allows us to redistrict uh, for any other reason. And uh, that's an important fact. That you know, yeah. yeah. And it makes it because I always wonder why our previous councils. It didn't seem like they always yeah. redistricted. So if, if Council Cummins can weigh in here. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> there is federal case law that it exists for congressional districts for the most part sure. that indicate the you know the population deviation you know, less than 10 percent is, is what yeah. we're for here so state law does state that if we redistrict wards shall be nearly equal in population and the ward shall be of as compact and contiguous territory as practical that means Supreme Court cases. right so how equal is equal I'm not a lawyer but uh, you know how to google and so the the case law uh, indicates that you know, less than 10% uh, can be regarded as one person, one vote compliant. 
10 to 16 percent total deviation uh, it can be acceptable if you can justify it. Anything greater than 16.4 percent is regarded as unconstitutional. And to, just to clarify, total deviation is if you, compared to the average uh, population. If you're looking at a war that's 10 percent above average and 5 percent below it is the biggest war. 5% below average is the smallest ward, that's 15% total deviation. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I guess I remember that. All right. Yeah. 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 That's a really good question. Uh, based on 2020 census data with our current uh, uh, ward map, our total deviation is 20.4%. So we can see that ward 3 is 11.7% is above average. And Ward 9 is the smallest ward, 8.7% below average. Uh, so 8.7 plus 11.7, 20.4 uh, is the total deviation. And that needs to be uh, below 16.4%, ideally less than 10%. I'll go as so far as to say ideally as close to zero as you can get if you're really going for one person, one vote. Right. All right, so that is uh, the current map. Uh, Devon, going to the uh, looking back slide now, I found that ward map uh, in a, a press clipping from 1992. This one? That the, uh, the pre-1990 ward map. Oh, this one here? This one. Oh, yeah. That's... Which is probably from the 1980 census, uh, yeah. assuming they redistricted in 19, after the 1980 census. Right, but there, I... I don't know that there was redistricting after the 90 census, was there? There was. Oh, there was. Uh, so we did redistrict in 1992, you know, after the 1990 census. And uh, then we redistricted in 2003 after the 2000 census. That 2003 map is still current. Uh, so we go back a little bit uh, uh, in more detail, going back to 1992. Uh, some press clippings here. Uh, I w went into this process thinking that it can't be that difficult. We just got to balance some numbers. We should be able to get through this relatively uh, painlessly without too much angst. And uh, I, I hope that will be the case in 2022. However, that was not the case in 1992, uh, nor was it the case after the 2000 census. Uh, apparently, yeah, going back 30 years, there was uh, quite a discussion about uh, minority representation and student representation, and kind of those were two concepts kind of in conflict with keeping neighborhood integrity uh, uh, as, as a concept. So there was uh, a bit of angst in 1992. Um, and you know, some of this was also occurring when the council was dropping from 18 to 9 to yeah. So some of that angst was the, the 2000 angst was there were a lot of different maps. Yeah, and I'm going to get that in a second. Um, I could not uh, the the city council records or the rules committee records from 1992 were not available, so the information I was able to get were these were from these press clippings uh, that came from a, a community member um, who was involved in, in the process back then. Mm -hmm. And it was actually his math, uh, Professor Peshkin, Dr. Peshkin at Northwestern. Uh, and it was his suggested math that eventually prevailed in 1992. And he's still around. He's still around. I talked to him last week. Uh, so, uh, 2000. Uh, in 2003. Is it Michael Peshkin? Yes. Mechanical engineering oh, professor. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I grabbed a quote from uh, then Alderman Morton uh, from, uh, that says 2021, it should say 2001. Oh. Sorry about that, right there. The June, June 25th, 2001 council minutes uh, said, uh, asked if the city is going to redistrict and recall that 1990 there were problems, wanted to avoid them, uh, and thought they we could do that if we knew who was going to do it and what the legal parameters were. So, you know, building on some lessons learned from uh, from Mayor Morton here. But, yeah. Uh, so the process back in 2003, which was the last time we were yesterday, uh, this 
uh, this discussion was held at the Rules Committee, uh, who met several times over the course of the year, along with some other public meetings. Uh, there were some other meetings of a, a committee of residents, which, from what I can tell, was an unofficial uh, committee, you know, kind of an ad hoc committee, not authorized or appointed by, by the mayor or anybody on the city council. It was a committee advisory panel of self-selected committee members, community members, I should say. Um, Fifteen maps were generated uh, as a result of this process, and uh, Councilmember Wynn recalls this process as being fairly fraught, and uh, eventually one of the maps was chosen and adopted by, by council. By 2003 standards, it was fraught. Yeah. It was a lovely experience by 2022 standards. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the criteria for redistricting in 2003 were delineated in an ordinance 103-0-03. Uh, I won't read through them right here, um, but these were the criteria that, uh, that were invoked at the time. I will point out that protection of public incumbency is, is listed as a criteria here. That might be... Uh, may not be something we want. Might not be something we, we want to do this year. I, I think remembering this, I have forgotten protection of Kentucky County, but contiguity, national, geogra national geographic borders, um, compactness, communities of interest, man-made geographic, all of those things just made very good common sense to everybody, and it was just how you could draw. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, after the 2000 census. Uh, we we'll go back 10 years after the 2010 census, and long story short, uh, the city council in 2012 decided not to redistrict, recalling perhaps uh, the, uh, the level of anxiety that the, 20, uh, the 2000 census uh, uh, incurred. Uh, and also noting that in the 2010 census, the population increased by only a minuscule amount, so per state law, redistricting was not required. So that brings us to where we are today. That's the same map uh, that we saw before. And Devon, I'm on the uh, slide that says 2020 census that has a copy of the map uh, with points to discuss tonight. Uh, and so uh, I guess these are some, uh, some points I'd like to make sure we have agreement on tonight. Uh, as we move forward here. Uh, number one, I, I, let's just officially confirm that we do intend to redistrict. Oh, I think we, we have to. Right? Yeah. Even though it's pretty, even, uh, though, pretty even though it's not, uh, uh, we're not obligated to do under state law, we realize that we are subject to, uh, you know, litigation under federal guidelines and uh, Council Cummings, uh, I think your recommendation would be, would be that we redistrict. Yeah, I think, I think we are in clear violation of equal protection right. at this point. So. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not going to get, it, it, I think we're going to get greater density in certain areas and a lesser density in others. And yeah. so uh, I think this trend might continue. Yeah, so, so. just to make this official, let's uh, let's take a vote and just confirm that uh, that, that we intend to redistribute. Somebody would like to make a motion. I, I, I move that we, well, yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. So the motion carries. Uh, it was uh, the motion was made by Councilmember Wynn, seconded by Councilmember uh, Reed. Uh, motion carries unanimously. So, next question is a, is a high level kind of philosophical question here. Um, what is what approach do we want to take? Do we want to throw the map out and start over from the from the very beginning, or do we want to just uh, take the, our existing map and uh, adjust some borders and make the math work. I think the least amount of change, yeah, in my opinion, agree. possible. I mean, I, especially I'm looking at the fifth ward now and looking at the second ward. I mean, clearly, if you just look at the percentages, we're just talking about shifting a little bit of the fifth ward into the second. In this particular area here, thinking of community of interest, I think about there's a, a block club over there that obviously, or a neighborhood group over there, and they don't care about political boundaries. They and so it's, it's an obvious area where we could easily shift the fifth ward to the second 
it's communities, it's neighbors that know one another that are already working together anyway. And, and I, I would be, say, yeah. so in the third board, because the third board is up plus 11, it, I, don't, I, I have to look, but drawn on the line can those six blocks, uh -huh. they are a neighborhood that's got content. Uh, contiguity? Yeah, contiguity. And there are natural and man made barriers. Um, it was, it used to be part of the board pool, uh, but in terms of you know, the, both the fourth board and the first board, the first board particularly needs those. Um, to me, that then, you know, that, that's one where you could almost, as you said, Bobby, it also, you could like start the map almost by making that change in the third board and either shifting some into the first some into the fourth and then having a ripple go across. Yeah, so this, this and, I, and I see an easy adjustment in five yeah. and the two. Yeah. Again, I think the least amount of change possible I, where I, where possible is okay. probably. Uh, uh, Council Member Reed. Uh, six, and, six and eight yeah. don't really need any adjustment. Okay. Nine needs attention. So let the record reflect that the consensus of the committee is that we take a, 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 a simple as possible approach here. Okay, uh, and the next question is, do we, can we do this ourselves, or do I we? I think it's simple, simple, simple. Simple, okay. Yeah, yeah. Simple. Simple, simple and straightforward. Simple, straightforward, where, to win, where possible, because maybe it'll yeah. get a little, it, it, may, get it may end up being get difficult right. in some areas, right. potentially, right. Uh, right. it's too early to know. Right. right, so next question is, do we do this ourselves, or do we hire somebody to do it uh, for us? I, I think do it ourselves. I mean, that's what we did the last time, yeah. and we didn't even have online tools. I mean, people did this stuff by hand back then. Yeah, so I would like to take this opportunity to show you. Did you expect us to answer that one? Uh, <laughs> that it is certainly possible yeah, two that we do this ourselves. There it is. Uh, oh, hold well, on one second. Let's that. go back. You're, boy, you're getting yeah, ambitious here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. So I will readily admit that Councilmember Newsma showed me the site and apparently he had been playing with it. Um, and he got us to a point where we probably wouldn't need to redistrict for another 30 years. <laughs> do, you really, do you really think not? Well, it was the, the percentage that he got us down to was just yeah, so just within so the, so yeah. I, 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 I'm intentionally not showing that map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me with the beer in my <laughs> office at home, with yeah. no public engagement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not appropriate. I would, <laughs> the other point I would make is simple, straightforward, and minimum required to be done so that we have the least disturbance in neighborhoods. And then actually, if it needs to be done 10 years ago, they can look 10 years from now, they can look back and say, well, the new newsman committee really set the standard. Yeah. Uh, and done it to my other. Well, I already, I just looked at what what you turned up. And How can I go back? Uh, you, you can close it and uh, try and hit the link yeah, again. Yeah, try to close it. Yeah. There's a flash over there. I was like, okay, we're done. We're done with the third. You may take a minute, uh, or you can right click. Uh, not a copy. Okay. Try uh, control and click. Yeah, it's not. Oh, no, oh. oh, it's there. See the blinking in the left? Hold on, everybody. Thank you. 
Twin Cities. And the Twin Cities, what, seven hours, six, seven hours? Yeah, just seven hours. About six hours. All right. I've done that drive many times. I've done it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so scenario. Well, let me let me show you on my laptop here, uh, since Devon's not going to see it anyway. Does your laptop have a D uh, HDMI port? It does. <laughs> of course, it is. She, she was actually a deputy long. city clerk yeah. in a town in Minnesota, and now she's at McKnight Foundation, which is oh, a pretty yeah. big foundation out there. She's right. really excited yeah. about that. She just got that job a few weeks ago. So. Yeah. Doing it. I didn't, I've never heard of them, but I looked them up. And, uh, amazing work. I want to try to put them in touch with Saul. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Everything I'm gonna. What do the two teams mean? Uh, oh, oh. For whatever zone that is, is total population and voting age population. Oh. And is it for the for the blocks at that? For place? that what that precinct that's shown there? Oh yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, there okay. It is. There's there's there's. So it's going by Evanston precincts. This is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I can't remember. So the number here's what we're gonna do. Move it into the first one and see what happens. Okay. We're going to move these blocks into the first one. Okay. Yeah. See, they're all really, they're, they're all multi-family. Right. Yeah. The reason why that other one is, is not is because that's a church. Yeah. Okay. And so that's how easy it is to do. And then we can look at the statistics up here. And now we see that Ward 3 is exactly where it needs to be, almost. Season. And Ward 1 is still undersized. About how much was it? By only what? 0.8? By it's still 6.8%. Oh, considerable. Yeah. Wait, even by moving all 1,000 people into the first ward? Did you do that right? Because I didn't think they were off by that way. I'm sorry, I don't need to say yeah. it quite that way. Yeah. Hey. The, we're not going to do the whole no, mapping no, exercise. No, no, right no. All, I only say, I mean, yeah. I didn't realize that it was. Isn't the first part, isn't the first ward, they're under by like 6 or 8%? And you would think by moving 1,000 people, either, or whatever, whichever of those two numbers is. Yeah. It started at 6.8%. Right. Yeah. How did it stay there? Oh, uh, you know what? I that probably got recalculated. Oh, I'm going to get that. Right. right. Okay. But, uh, but Wait, good so demonstration, though. That's yeah, cool. excellent. Demonstration. Right. So okay. it's it's so, fairly yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Not yeah. somebody, it's not user friendly enough to let the general public play around with it. Yeah. But it's. Oh, I, I think this is this is excellent. I mean, the ability quick. to do this yeah. like this is. I mean, yeah. people would come in. They had worked hours, tens of hours on each of the maps that came in. And because it because it was so much, um, you could not easily make these changes and visualize it. Exactly. That's why there was. Exactly. That's probably yeah. why there was a lot of um, panics about it. Yeah, so I'd never have to recalculate. No, okay, that's yeah, you, you guys, you guys did the point so, that, that I was trying to make. So Jonathan, if, I'm happy to look at your what your your various maps are that you have done, or do you want to do that? I, I Maybe don't. Not tonight, I, not yeah, tonight. I, I don't. I, think I, I think would also be happy to do that. If the map has to be drawn at some point, and somebody somewhere is going to eventually draw. I don't think it's a bad thing to start with your map or somebody's map. As a, as, a, as a straw man, I, okay. If if you guys are comfortable with that, I can share that at our next committee. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Uh, but just just to, so we can get with the understanding that I was not really looking at any criteria. Was I was going to say, I think it, where. it might be useful to provide um, council member Newsom with some feedback. I, I agree. And then and you can make an adjustment and then show that draft. Yeah. Just so there's because I like I said. In the fifth floor, it's very clear where I think we can yeah. pick up the difference. Yeah. Yeah. In an area that I think it wouldn't disrupt the community that much. Right, and I thought that we had a conversation with 
Peter, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. He would be able to say, and Jonathan, you probably can say yeah. pretty straightforwardly. I think Juan probably is at a disadvantage right now, but he can talk. Well, Juan's going to get bigger no matter what. Juan's going to get faster, yeah. so he, he's not talking about it. So the conversation is going to be most painful for, with uh, council members whose wards are going to get smaller, yeah. which is you know, two, three, seven, and eight, and six. Well, you just, it's just been pretty painless for Yeah, me. and I'll talk to Councilmember Braithwaite before I provide you my feedback, just right. so he and I are on the same page. Um, and also potentially you, you know, Councilmember Kevin. The she needs more. She needs more. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> yeah. And actually, Hello. 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 No, that I, I, it was, it was too much detail. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead, Devon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So I, I will say, uh, this one is just uh, that's not purely uh. Uh, you know, mathematical, getting a population reason. I do think there is something to uh, South Evanston having a portion of the lakefront uh, uh, and spreading out the representation of the lakefront uh, throughout Evanston so it's not just the seventh ward, the first ward, and the, the third ward. So there's a ward that has a bit more economic diversity um, that also has. I uh, feel some ownership of the right front uh, and connected to it in a way that other evidence feel as well. Devon, the only way to achieve that is you're going to slice through uh, neighborhoods of contiguity with natural boundaries, boundaries with man-made boundaries. It's a lot of boundaries over there. Yeah, I, I would say communities of interest. As a train station. Yes, a train station, you know, you're looking at two train lines, uh, uh, Chicago Avenue, which carries over 20,000 cars a day, and, um, and uh, you know, I would, I, I would argue very strongly against that. I think you're also going to end up with uh, a lot of community pushback from uh, folks in the third ward who all view each other. All of their kids go to Lincoln School together. Um, there are very strong block, uh, block groups throughout, and they all run north-south because... That's a good point. I wonder how the school uh, attendance areas will change with this new change that's happened in District 65 because previously that is, that's been the line, right? Chicago no, actually, Avenue or no? Or is it Custer? No, it's Custer. Right. No, it, 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 um, to uh, the lakefront as well. But Devon, um, Devon, you are Devon, you are going to break up neighborhoods. The the blocks of Forest and Michigan are double blocks down there. The six and seven hundred blocks are all one long block. Um, those are all neighborhoods where kids play back and forth. Neighbors know each other. Blocks have block parties together. Um, the community around Baker Park extends uh, in, a, in a radius all around it. Um, Devon, I'm going to fight you really hard on this. I, I think that that's, that, is, that violates all the principles we just said that we would not do. And we're not, you know, not going to answer that question definitively or draw the borders tonight. It's you know, not the intent of, uh, of the discussion tonight. So. Um, I would like to move forward and Devon go into the proposed process now. Uh, the next slide. Uh, so I'm just throwing this up as my suggestion. Uh, open it up to uh, the committee for your comments. But here's what I was thinking. Uh, is that this committee would continue to meet regularly, uh, whether that's monthly or every other month, whatever we deem necessary. Um, that we would do uh, a kickoff, uh, you know, community town hall, uh, June or July uh, this year. Uh, that would be virtual, have it on Zoom, which allows maximum participation. 
uh, in order to allow our growing Hispanic community to participate, we would probably do a separate one uh, in Spanish. Uh, and then the primary avenue for public engagement in this process would be at scheduled committee meetings, uh, the meetings of the redistricting committee. So in future meetings, we'll have to have the Zoom set up. People can come in and, and uh, speak in person, of course, but we would devote a lot, a, a significant portion of our agenda time to, uh, to public comment so we can hear uh, from stakeholders, from uh, stakeholder groups, what neighborhoods they're concerned about, what other issues they're concerned about, making sure that uh, uh, that we're conducting this uh, this process in uh, a very transparent uh, manner and that we are uh, soliciting feedback uh, from all the stakeholders that need to be involved here. Uh, so then I anticipate that, you know, that stakeholder engagement, public engagement will go through November of, of this year, that's six months, uh, to get the input we need from the community. Then uh, we as a committee uh, will draft several maps uh, that we would then uh, release to the community for comment in January of next year, uh, allow some public comment on those proposed maps, and uh, then ultimately approve uh, at the committee level our proposed map uh, in May of 2023 that would then go to the city council for uh, formal approval. Uh, I'm targeting May of 2023 and no earlier than that date uh, because uh, the ninth ward has a special election in uh, in April of 2023, okay. and so we don't want to we don't want to do anything different before that election. Okay, uh, if we target May 2023, we are still well ahead of schedule. Uh, according to state law, it would be uh, mid. Uh, in November of 2024 is our absolute drop dead deadline to get this done. Uh, and if you recall, 20 years ago, 2003, it was December of 2003 when they passed the map. So, right. and we had started in six, seven months. Yeah, six, seven months. So even with that complex process, we managed to do it. Right, so and it was harder last time because you didn't have the automation. Yeah. So we have plenty of time to get this done. Uh, maybe too much time, but we can't get it done. We should not get it done before May 2023. So we'll bring it in as, as soon as we you know, as soon as we can. Here. So does does this make sense to, yeah. to committee members? Yes. And yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, I would I would only say during the regular committee meetings we are going to maybe not <coughs> uh, have official um, drafts, but we even talked about in this meeting, starting to take a look at, at some different relationships. Yeah. Because I see that that's down in, in this schedule, that's down, that's like number four. Yeah, we wouldn't have official drafts until later. Maybe we have <coughs> Those some, are the official ones. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. maybe we have some just working drafts, drafts yeah. just, you know, hypothetical drafts. Right. And then, and then we play with them. Yeah. But we definitely, we, we should also, probably at some point, when we just, just like we just said, we invite various other aldermen in yeah. to talk to us. I think that's really important. Yeah. That's why I said even before I give you some feedback on the what? initial right. okay, so non-official drive I have, to talk to I, I'm in the process of reaching out to all the aldermen, uh, not in, including the ones who are not on this committee. Yeah. yeah, to just highlight what you know changes are our store and start to get their feedback on, on issues that are important. Because certainly the council members ourselves are stakeholders in this process. Yeah. Whether or not we officially include incumbency, yeah, you know, I think we have a, yeah. as good of an idea as anyone as to what's going on in our work. Well, and as Bobby said, you probably you knocked on every door. I've knocked on every door every more than a number of times. You certainly fired the entire board a number of times. Yeah. And probably could you could probably describe a house and I can tell you exactly. there. Yeah. So we all are, are in that position. Yeah. So. Okay. And, and, and why you may not choose incumbency as a criteria, uh, criterion, criteria. Um, you'll need to sort of identify exactly like where we live as a practical matter, because if you're starting to move borders, you may find yourself 
moving from fifth ward to now living in second ward. Um, that might have been what that phrase was for, was about before. Okay. Was that actually that we not redistrict someone out of off the council? Well, they wouldn't necessarily. So they wouldn't necessarily be off council. Yes, they they could potentially be running against another council member for the same seat, unless city council for some reason decided right. to expand the number of council members right. okay. back to you know a higher number rate. Well, than that. Right. But, but I think I think you I, I think you have one year. Uh, so once the map is changed, I believe you can run even if you. I shouldn't say that the county is sure, but I believe you can run in the new district even if you will draw it out as long as you move to this district. And I might be saying this wrong, but as long as you move into that district uh, within the period of time, I, I could be wrong. I, I, but certainly this district doesn't resist you out, you maintain your office to the time when you start over. The I think if we pursue our you know, simpler is better approach, and we're not making major changes. I think we all live well enough embedded in our districts that it's, it's not going to be. Yeah, I was just practice. thinking yeah. about it based on a little bit about where I know where we live. I don't know if it'll be an issue. No, yeah. Yeah. Um, right, it would only really be super important for the wards that are bigger. Um, right. So this kind of be, it might be a. I think incumbency is kind of a move point. Yeah. 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 All right, so we have confirmed the process then. Uh, for what it's worth, I'll just uh, share with you the census data that I have going back for the, the last three censuses since I. Do you have, have uh, 2020 census? <clears throat> this is 2000, so let's just track uh, you know, the. Uh, the minority population in Evanston is growing. That's not a surprise. In 2000, 68% white. In 2010, 63% white. In 2020, 59% white. Um, and so we have the, the data here. And what we're looking at is total population in the wards, but the demographics come from voting age population, the VAP. Uh, so just to make that distinction. And if you're really paying very close attention, you'll notice that these numbers don't all add up to 100. Uh, and that's due, um, I assume, to, yeah, to uh, people checking two different boxes. Yeah, multiple boxes, I should say. Okay, so I think the points, if, if we're gonna take a dive in here, comparing 2020 to 2000, the last time we uh, we were redistricted, uh, the ward, second ward, and uh, the eighth ward were majority minority, second, fifth, and eighth, I should say. And 2020, with our current boundaries, that's still the case. It's second, fifth, and eighth, and so the. The numbers have shifted a little bit. The Hispanic population has grown. Uh, the, the Asian population has grown. The black population has shrunk. Um, but you know, the, the numbers haven't shifted enough that it seems like we would not have to redraw our ward borders if taking race into, into particular consideration. So small changes on the edges of the second. Small changes on the edges of the wards will won't result in significant changes in these percentages here. Okay. So we still would maintain. Right. So we still would maintain um, three wards that the three wards that are majority minority. Um, what we mean eight wards have the limit margin? The eight wards. From my understanding of my ward is roughly 50% Caucasian, 50%, you know, other minority. Uh, the numbers I have, Devon, are based on voting age population. The numbers I have in front of me right here. Um, so for the eighth ward, as currently defined. And that's even more white. Yeah, 36% 36 36 white, 16% uh, Hispanic, 
39% black, 8% Asian, 3% Native American, 0.3% Pacific Islander. I'm on, the, I think, the last page of the presentation here. Topic. Uh, we'll go back. Yeah. And then, yeah, we'll get the last page here. And if you don't, I, I don't know if you the uh, black voting age population. Uh, and there may be, I'm not exactly sure how that, oh, voting age population. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, if, if there's demographic information for total population, then let's pull that up as well. Uh, this, the voting age population is what was readily available to me when I was putting this together. All right, so, um, any other items to discuss? <coughs> Excellent job. Yes, meeting schedule. Thank you so Excellent. much. All right. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, is the meeting schedule moving forward. So, are we thinking monthly meetings? It's up to you. It's hard yeah, to yeah, but at least for now, for sure. Yeah. But the first few until we set up the, at least the public meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I think we're well, what is it? And you're thinking, are you thinking about July for a public meeting? July? Yeah. I think in July. Yeah, because we need the June meeting to get our, get our, our numbers in order. Yeah. And what we think as a committee on how to have a meeting. So let's look at, uh, let's look at calendars. Should we do it on, I think between the same night as finance and budget, we're out. Is anyone else? So, in July. Is that in the next meeting? Well, yeah, we're thinking about June meeting. Sure, so we're looking at the... Are you about, what did you say? Okay, I was talking about the town hall. So I'm looking at the city calendar. Um, based upon the direction from the committee, and I've, I've texted the interim city manager already, we're likely, it's probably the best that we use council chambers um, for, uh, for these meetings. For these meetings. Okay. Um, while the committee is small, but for the public engagement piece, we're going to have use of the technology available. Um, you're going to have the space if you actually will do come in person. Uh, the Preservation Commission meets on the same night as Finance and Budget. Oh, so we should, and they're going. And right they're now. in Council Chambers. Okay. Um, so should we do maybe the, is, is it? So in June, the alternative would be the third, I guess the fourth week of June, which is the 21st on a Tuesday, if Tuesdays work best for you. Um, 22nd is bad because you have Economic Development and the Land Use Commission. 21st is bad because uh, council members Reed, uh, yes, Burns, and Newsma are in housing and community development. Okay. Yeah, and me. And you too? No, no, not CDBG. No. Economic development. Right. Um, so what about like the second or third Tuesday? Well, no, this is the second Tuesday. What about the third Tuesday of the month? What does that look like? That was the third Tuesday. Oh, the third Tuesday. Yeah. Fourth Tuesday of the month? Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, 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 no more the fourth, I thought your board meetings were the Thursday of the month. The fourth Thursday of the month. Yeah, so we're suggesting yeah, fourth, fourth Tuesday. Fourth Tuesday of the sorry. month. I got my mask on. I'm sorry, I thought I got it. I thought it was Thursday. Yeah, that's what I, I got my mask on. So what is the fourth Tuesday? For me, but also, what about on the calendar? Uh, the only thing we have on the calendar is that, well, nothing on, nothing Tuesday evening. Should we try for that? It's me right now. Uh, let me just check July as well. One, <coughs> two, three, four. Do you know what NWED? Do you know what happened? I don't, that's why I hesitated because there's some committee meetings that I don't really know. Okay. It just pops up. Uh, MWEBE is, looks like it's on the third Wednesday. Okay. okay. So it looks like fourth Tuesday is open. Okay. Was okay. well, it seven, right? Seven p.m. Uh, seven. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Seven or six. Seven. Seven. seven I think. Yeah, it's it's good. Good. Oh. Yeah, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Chair prefers seven. All right. We'll take it seven. Okay. All right, so Nick, do you need anything else from us? 
Um, your July town hall, um, would you have that off-site in the community? Typically, the town halls are not uh, at the Civic Center. Yeah, do you want to talk about a town hall? I think that would probably make the most sense to do that first. We can talk about a date. Okay, that's fine. We can talk about a date, yeah. and then how the logistics we can talk about later. You yeah. and I can talk about that. But yeah. I just want to make sure you had a date for your town hall. Yeah, so you want to talk about a town hall sometime in July? I guess it would be two after dates. our June. I guess you would need two dates because you want to After our June meeting. Um, weekends, evenings? For a town hall, an online virtual town hall. I would imagine it's going to be a small group. I think for something like this, you maybe want to mix it up and do, you know, one during the week and, and one, one on the weekend. weekend. I think that's a good idea, Devon. Well, I think we want to do one in English and one in Spanish. Okay. So English during the week and Spanish on the weekend. The weekend. Yeah. Um. So. And, and in one of English, it really is bilingual, right? Because it's being translated. So we can say, what is saying in I, you know, bi bilingual in Spanish. So. I spoke with Clerk Mendoza earlier, and she kind of felt that it would probably be most efficient if we had our Spanish meetings separately. I think I think the the idea is for it to be a, the primary language for, that the presentation would happen in is in Spanish. Yeah. Right. Um, and so the council member reads point in terms of if we need some sort of interpretation or uh, translation for that, that request, language. according to the city's um, language access policy, yeah. that request needs to come in in advance for the English meeting, but the Spanish meeting will be presented as the primary okay. language. Right. So if someone is hard of hearing or needs some other language other than like we would need to know that in advance of the English right presentation or town hall and then we could arrange for that to happen but then for the Spanish town hall that would be primarily that would go off primarily in Spanish right do you know how much that costs that might be a city manager thing I'm just curious to have it, it is a city manager it comes out of the city manager's office in terms of arranging those sort of services and it it varies okay. right so like different interpreters cost more money because of the rare rarity of the language uh, we we deal with it with uh, court access as well. So Spanish interpreters usually cheaper. Is it a pretty standard hourly rate though? Like yes. What is that roughly? Um, I be I can't recall off the top of my head, but I uh, believe it's talking. you know somewhere right one twenty five to one fifteen an hour. I think it's worth expanding our language access. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about this um, as part of our uh, welcoming center discussion. Um, but there are you know, many other languages spoken, and we can't get them all, but there's some core languages that really, that really shoot across different cultures and ethnicities, especially African cultures and ethnicities, like French being one of them. We have a, a larger than people would expect uh, refugee population from Senegal, and, uh, I mean from um, um, uh, I'm, I'm not know why I'm just skipping on you now, but from uh, Rwanda and the Congo, there it is. And um, so I think there's a way to add like, you know, two, to have three total additional languages and, and really capture a much wider audience than we've been able to. So we can talk a bit more about that. Let's put that on the agenda for yeah. next week. I'm yeah. trying to get some data from Mr. 65 because they've done some good studies on this. Yeah, that's what I mean. and, and it may be a technical issue in terms of virtually because Having the translation concurrently might be problematic, but we can see, I can talk to Luke Stowe about um, what we can do in terms of yeah. closed captioning. That's what I'm trying to get it in early so we can figure out all of the... Yeah. And maybe we have some handouts that are, could be printed in multiple languages. Yeah, I mean, I think we can even go beyond the three in that way, but I, it would be nice to have full translation to try to expand it this time. Yeah, yeah. we kind of... Yeah. It would be really interesting to find out Exactly. That's the type of data I think this 65 has, at least for their student yeah, population. I'm sure they do. So I'm going to try to get that from them. And cool. I've been meeting sure them. I will. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's look at calendars for one primarily English 
uh, town hall and then one uh, Spanish town hall. Looking in July. And let me make sure we City calendar yeah, for that day. But that's 4th of July weekend. So, what about July 14th? There's a social services committee meeting that evening and the environment board. Okay, so what about the 21st? Uh, equity and empowerment at 6 30. Yeah. Well, the 28th, that's why I'm going to do Yeah. I think that's the bond support for me, too. So, if we're looking at Thursdays, the 7th would be the only one. Okay, so what if we looked at Wednesdays? Land Use Commission at 7. Well, you're, you're doing a virtual, this is oh, the town hall meeting. So you're doing a virtual. Okay. Town. virtual. So what if we did July 13th? That, let me just confirm. Let me just confirm that we'll be in town. trying to center the community it probably should be even presented in Spanish. And then like Jonathan say it in English? No, or not say it at all. I, he, it. Oh, he, he can be announced and say, you know, Councilman Manu spoke with somebody. And then, and then, but that's, that and then back and forth is, read, yeah. Read what your prepared remarks. Something like that. That yeah. back and forth is very, is really harsh. It they they really did that harsh. during a budget conversation at Fleetwood uh, for the Spanish speaking population. It and it was, much. yeah, it's very choppy. And yeah, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, let's, we don't need to decide that right now. Yeah, let's, let's sort that let's, out. Let's hold those two days. I, let's hold those two days, for yeah, sure. I conducted good. enough meetings in Chinese where I had somebody translating for me in Mandarin that I'm probably in this milieu. No, no, I, no it's, it's really just centering them. And in fact, the, the one that I went to where we, they did it differently is they had actually Mike Rivera who speaks Spanish and, um, I think it was uh, Clerk Mendoza there to to just present yeah. a city manager issue. It was around the budget, but they presented it basically. Yeah. It's, it's less choppy, more smooth, doesn't take as much time. 
That's yeah. a big thing too. Right? The event yeah. becomes a much longer right. event if you have it, to. It is a seamless, but you're right. It's yeah. centered on the Spanish. It's yeah. better for the but audience. I, 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 I don't agree. We don't have to decide. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to. Chinese. Well, I didn't speak it. I'm a translator. Um, this may be something that uh, Clerk Mendoza would be interested in. Yeah. Oh, we can talk. I think yeah. she'd be very interested. Yeah. 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 Okay. We could also see if Juan Mendoza wants. Did you say that? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so I think we're good for now. Okay. Anything else? All right. I will declare the meeting adjourned and.